Hello everyone, my name is Yuval Kahila and I want to take you guys through a transformative experience that happened in my life. A couple of years ago, I began to talk more publicly about my ideas and opinions with other people. And I quickly noticed that the arguments I was having with people were of a nature that by the end of the argument, neither party really enjoyed the conversation. There was sometimes yelling and it was a generally uncomfortable experience. As you can tell, I was pretty opinionated, to say the least. What I never realized is that perhaps whilst I was so proud of the fact that I was factually evident in these conversations and the things I were saying was all true and there was no way I, I shut the other person down, I was right, I'd read the Quran and I'd read the Bible twice, I knew what I was talking about. I didn't consider that maybe I was the reason people asked questions like, are atheists happy? And why are atheists so angry all the time? So I thought back at a quote that my dad would tell me a lot, and he would say, you know, it's more important to be wise than it is to be right about things. And I never realized until much later that what I really took away from this quote is, if I don't say things in a way that makes people want to listen to me, which means if I say things in ways which are provocative and makes you angry and shows that I'm right, but doesn't make you think, you know, hey, this guy cares and he's thinking and he's listening, then nobody's gonna hear what I have to say. So thus began my reflecting process. I started thinking, you know, what exactly are my goals in these conversations, and it didn't take me long to realize that I wasn't meeting any of them. The conversations I were having weren't actually, ha I, I, I really thought that the ideas I had were worth, I mean, kind of like Ted, worth sharing. I had the, uh, the opinion that these conversations were important and I could learn from them, but at the end of the day, nobody listened to me and I didn't listen to anybody else. A while later, my math teacher at the time, introduced me to a guy called Anthony Magnabosco, who is a YouTuber and practices something called street epistemology. Now, street epistemology, it's, it's, an, interesting, it's an interesting topic, and I uh, ask all of you to check it out. Because basically what I saw in, in these guys' videos is I would watch them, and he would approach a religious person generally. That was his topic of street epistemology. And he would approach this person and ask them, if you're religious, on a scale of one to a hundred, how religious would you say that you really are? And sometimes people would say a hundred, and by the end of the conversation, they would say 30, because he'd ask again. I was shocked, but more than that, I was shocked about the fact that by the end of the conversation, he was exchanging contact information, and they wanted to talk again, and everyone was happy and calm. And I never had that experience in my conversations. I didn't know why. So I started reading, and I realized soon that street epistemology in its essence is rather than focusing on the quality in the sense of the content of one's beliefs, it is focusing on the ways in which we arrive to the beliefs that we hold and how credible these ways really are. And it has six core principles. Firstly, is to utilize processes which are logical, for example, deduction, in which if both your premises are true, your result has to be true, rather than something like emotion. The belief on basis of evidence, being able to justify what you're saying with sources. Being humble and honest about your knowledge in certain topics. Being open to people's beliefs. Avoiding, you know, being defensive. It, it, it's, this is a really difficult one and it was for me because I was very passionate but it's really important because you don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. The focus on questioning, uh, this one was the most difficult for me. I really like talking, in case you haven't noticed, I'm up here talking. And this one asked me to listen to people rather than just to talk, and that was really difficult for me to do. Now I decided it was time for me to try. It was time for me to go out there and have these conversations, and what better use of my morning commute, which was a taxi drive, uh, for 20 minutes, uh, then this.
So I would come into the cab and I'd have this conversation planned, sometimes even written down, and I'd start talking to my taxi drivers. And I observed a few things. I mean, the conversation didn't always work, but at the end of the day, I was achieving the same results. Sometimes I would in enter a cab where the taxi driver would tell me, you know, I've always been really religious and I'm 100% sure about it. And by the end of the cab drive, they said, you know, I'm really not sure I'd put myself at a 30. And I was finally achieving what Anthony was achieving. But more than that, I felt I was learning from these conversations more than ever before. And thus, I was really proud of myself for being able to refresh the conversational tactics that I had with people. I changed, but it was limited. Uh, my TOK teacher says that something, information and data only becomes knowledge once you're able to apply it. And what I found is I wasn't able to apply these new uh, items, uh, this new information to other areas of my life. I mean, we've all been here for quite a while, maybe you're going to go home and this might look pretty appealing for you to have for dinner. I'd prefer to have one of these. <laughs> See, I'm a vegetarian and I'm not so interested in that. So what I found was I was having the same conversations with people that I had about atheism that I was about um, vegetarianism, not broccoli in particular, but vegetarianism. And these conversations would end in yelling and I would tell them that you're wrong and there's no need to kill all these animals and they would say no, but meat tastes good or some other factual argument. And I realized that sometimes in life we've got to take two steps forward and a step back. And in this sense it means, yeah, we're talking about reflecting, refreshing and renewing and sometimes you have to go back a step because this is an ongoing process. And I had to reflect again, and I realized that I hadn't really learned anything. So I refreshed again, and I was able to all of a sudden apply. I didn't need a conversation structure anymore because this was knowledge, and I could apply it to other areas of my life. And thus, I renewed the ways in which I have conversations with people. I was no longer the angry atheist because but more importantly, actually, I realized that the reasons I was angry at first weren't because of the nature of the conversation or the content of the conversations I was having with religious people or other people for that matter. It was my attitude towards these conversations that made them negative. And when I first showed this to the first person that I showed this talk to, they said, you know, this is kind of brave of you, and I, I, I wasn't sure why, but they said it's brave of you to go up in front of people and say that the reason that you're angry and the reason that things aren't working for you in your life is your fault. So on that note, I'd like to leave you all with street epistemology and attitude, and maybe you should check street epistemology out. Thank you very much.